You ready for this? Glass and I, caps and I hoodies. I know. I look really short sitting next to you, you look really tall. I'm tiny. We're about the same height, aren't we? I'm slouching. No, you are taller than me. I'm you are taller nine. than me. Alright, I'm five seven. So Okay. Should we start this? I'm looking into camera. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Talks. Well today I'm really excited, I've got a guest. Now this man is somebody that I have known for 19 years. Oh god. Yes, yes. That wasn't a, oh god, 19 years of knowing him, that's 19 years, I can't believe <laughs> it's 19 years. It's 19 years and, well, I'll, I'm going to let you tell everybody who you are, so please introduce yourself. Who I am? Yeah, who you are. I'm Daniel Boys. <laughs> That's it. I'm Daniel Boys. We met through friends, yep. really. Um, Daniel was working on the show Grease. He's an actor. I should have probably said Maybe that. Maybe I should have said that. One, one, of, us should, assuming I'm Daniel one Boys. of us should have said it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Daniel's an actor and um, he was working in Grease, which was in the theatre over the road from me, and I was working in Bombay Dreams. Yeah. And we kind of met each other in passing, so Daniel was always somebody that... I would say hi to, and but that was at the same parties or at the you same know, pub. Yeah, same pub. Very often the same pub. Yes. And yeah, and that was 19 years ago, and oh. we've managed to stay friends this long, so we must be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Daniel has, you've had quite a career, Daniel. It's so funny, isn't it? We say, that as actors, we always say this, we're so kind of down on ourselves going, oh. I haven't done anything. I felt like I need to be doing this, this, this. And then you meet people who go, you've actually had a lovely career. You have to, you have, do you have to remind yourself? You you have to, yeah. You have been lucky. I always say that. I feel lucky that I've done some of the things I've done. I was stalking you last night online and I know a lot of the things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't tell everybody about that. <laughs> but no, um, I, you know, I was looking online and um, seeing oh. um, some of what Daniel has done that I didn't know about. And there's, there's, there's a lot. You know, you've had... You've had a, you've had quite an interesting career, um, and I mean interesting in the nicest possible way. Um, so I just wondered if you could tell us, you know, if we could talk about your career a bit. So I literally go back to the beginning. I mean, I I went to drama school like lots of us do, not all actors do, but I did. I went to Guildford School of Acting. Two thousand and one, I graduated, yeah. which I can't quite believe because it doesn't really seem like I've been doing it very long. But yeah, two thousand and one, I've been in various musical theatre shows including Greece, um, Rent was my first job, um, which I know you're a huge fan of, uh, amazing show, Sunset Boulevard, High Society, oh gosh, I mean, yeah, a few. I'm going to read some of them off, some of the ones that Daniel <laughs> hasn't mentioned, you know, that I, I saw, so you said Rent, you said Sunset, Greece, yeah. Sweeney Todd, oh, Sweeney Todd, I yeah. adore Sweeney Todd, War of the Worlds, yes, Avenue Q. Yes. Wolf Boy. Which was described as a psychosexual musical. I saw it. It was something like that. <laughs> Godspell. Well, it was a concert, but it was the... I can't remember what birthday celebration concert. Yeah. yeah. High Society. Yeah. Spamalot. Yes. Nativity the Musical. Nativity the Musical. And Nativity the Film. Nativity Rocks the Movie. Yep. Um, and also, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, but I don't even think of... This, this next thing as the biggest thing that I've seen you in because I know I've seen you in other things that just you were you were amazing in not that you weren't amazing in this but Any Dream Will Do um, yes. which was 2007 2007 um, and Daniel was one of the contestants of this reality TV show if you don't know what it is about um, Joseph and Naomi is it Technicolor Dreamcoat yeah. and they were looking for the new Joseph and yeah. Daniel auditioned for that and that was amazing. It was such a weird time of my life. So I'd been out of drama school for six years. Um, and, I'd, you know, I'd been in the West and I'd done stuff. And Joseph is, is a role I, I did generally want to play. I, I was obsessed with the 91 production with Jason Donovan in it and Lindsay Hately. Mm -hmm. And then, look, I'm going to admit, I remember when the Maria program happened the year before. Where I was one of the people going, I can't believe reality TV, you know, musical theatre is going this way. But then when I saw the, online the auditions for We're Looking for a New Joseph, 
I just thought, well, why not just go for it and see what happens? I honestly didn't think I'd get anywhere near the live TV shows because I was already an actor. And, you know, they like the builder. Yes. They like yeah. the, they like the yeah. sob story. Um, so I'd, But I, anyway, I went to the audition and I got through after round after round after round. found myself in Angela Webber's castle in Ireland in the final 20. And then from that, they picked the final 12. And I was one of them. And I got, you know, there I was suddenly on primetime TV a Saturday night with nine million people watching and voting. And yeah. It was so surreal. We were all living together for the whole time I was there. So we were in the Joseph house, as they called it, living with these lovely guys. All of us got on so well. It was um, it was just a it was a joyous experience. And of course, I wanted to win because yeah. I wanted to play that role. But you know, we all knew this is no secret. I've said this before. We all knew that Lee Mead was going to win. Mm -hmm. It was very obvious that he was their favourite, and I think Lee knew that too. Mm -hmm. I think it must have been very hard for him because it was obvious. The way they treated him yeah. off camera and yeah. during the week. and But I do think he was the rightful winner. I, you know, I didn't... I came sixth out of 12. I came halfway. And the, the good thing about... Not the, the only good thing, but I, I guess a good thing from doing that was that it did open more doors for me because I was... I'd been on TV. As sad as it is in a way, I suddenly was getting a lot of attention from yeah. theatre producers yeah. um, but I wouldn't change it I wouldn't I I'm kind of proud that I put myself through it because it was a brave thing to do because you are being kind of scrutinized live on telly by by the panel and mm. they said some pretty nasty things mm. occasionally yeah we were all I always I remember at that time you know we were all it would come to a sad Friday or Saturday night, Saturday, yeah. Saturday night, and we were all, all be crowded around the TV, watching, you know, voting for Daniel, you know, um, trying to keep him in, and and blown away a lot of the time just by because even though we knew you, not a lot of us realised um, how talented you were, <laughs> but not just how good your voice was. I remember at that time being just going. Bloody hell, who is that? Oh. See, you know, it was just... And, and something I've never told you before, Daniel, is that my agent contacted me and told me, they're doing this new reality TV programme, they're looking for a new Joseph. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. I said, because they're going to look for non-actors, yeah. they're going to look for non-musical theatre people, they're not going to want to... And then Daniel was in it, and I was like, oh my God, I was like, okay, so you can... It, it, we were talking earlier, wasn't it, about being put in boxes, you yeah. know, that you, that if you're a TV actor, you're never looked at for theatre yeah. or, or the other way around or things like that. So, um, so Actually, yeah. that's very interesting because I just said a minute ago, it opened a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. However, I do think five, six, seven years afterwards, I, I remember actually saying in an interview, I think it's kind of the reverse has happened. And I think I was then being known as... Oh, Daniel Boys from the Joseph thing. Yes, I think it was yeah. almost. It was almost. You kind of get tagged, don't you? I got labelled as the. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was the guy that was on the. Yeah. But I think because now it was what fourteen years ago. I mean, I can't sometimes not forget, but I get surprised when people still yeah. talk about it yeah. and go, "I remember you from the Joseph mm. thing," because I kind of don't even think of that as part of my career. Do you know a really funny thing? Um, one of my viewers, Scott, who is a friend of mine from New York originally, and they got energy will do in the states after it was on here and i was over there and he was like that to me oh my god uh, you know he, he knew i was from london and he was like um i'm watching this thing any dream will do uh, <laughs> and he, he didn't know who'd won and i was like my friend's in that and he's like who's your friend who's your you know so really excited and i was like do you want me to tell you who won so obviously i didn't but um but yeah it's it was really weird that it had a life over there as well but you do know, you know what it was shown in so many places and yeah. I was getting so many lovely messages yeah. from being on that TV show. Yeah. It was quite amazing. Talking about things you've done and I want to go on to now people you've worked with. So I'm just going to list off some names here. You know, just like every other friend has worked with John Barryman, <laughs> Megan Hilty, yes. Olivia Newton-John, <laughs> Cheetah Rivera, Kerry Ellis. Just to name a few people, so you've you've sung with some amazing people, haven't you? Actually, that's so weird. Yes, but mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I don't ever think of that. I, oh, I was like I that forget. when I was looking that up last night. I was like, what? Oh my god, I'd completely forgotten about some of them. Yeah. But yes, I have sung with those people. Yeah. Actually, two years ago, I was, I'm not name dropping here at all, but I was <laughs> touring with Michael Ball. Yeah. And 
I had to really kick myself because Michael Ball was someone who, as a teenager in my bedroom, yeah. I would sing along to Michael Ball. I was obsessed. Mm. I wanted to have his career. I wanted to be Michael Ball. Mm -hmm. And now he's a friend of mine. Yeah. And it's it, uh, the same must have happened to you before you yeah. were in shows and things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so, it is so weird how there's these people you respect and look up to it, and then suddenly you work with them and you realise that they're just They're colleagues. just like you and I. Yeah. And it is, isn't it? It's a belief that they're somehow different from us because of the careers that they have or because of the yeah. things they've done. And then you work with them and you're a bit like, is that it? Is yeah. that? And I don't mean that in a bad way, but just, they are just like you and me, you know, so yeah. it's very interesting, isn't it? What about... Um, Neighbours. <laughs> it's like, what's it called? What's it called? Australian drama. Oh my gosh. Brain, brain fog there. So, yeah, Neighbours, tell us about the Neighbours theme tune. So, I need to kind of put this out there. I admit, put my hand up, I still watch Neighbours. I, I watch remember Neighbours. you telling me this when people we can't spoke believe about it. it. So, I was like, for those what? of you who don't know, Neighbours is an Australian soap. I'm is sure it still on now? That's what I'm saying. It's still on. It's in its 34 fourth year something like that and I've watched it ever since I've watched every single episode <laughs> um I still watch it it's even set to record in case I miss it honestly this drives my boyfriend absolutely crazy it's kind of terrible but it's one of those things that because I've always watched it it's just 20 minutes where I can sit down yeah completely zone Switch out off. and I know these characters because mm -hmm. I've kind of grown up with them yeah anyway about I don't remember when this was now maybe 2015. I was going to say it's around then, yeah. 2013, 14, 15, around then. I was touring with High Society at the time, and I watched an episode of Neighbours, and at the end, Toadfish, who's one of the characters, yeah, came on Toadfish. screen going, Good day. I'm going to do an awful Australian <laughs> accent. Good day. Could you, be <laughs> could you be the new voice of Neighbours? And I was like, Yes, I could. <laughs> Basically, it was a competition. You had to record yourself. They said you downloaded a backing track. And you had to record yourself singing the Neighbours theme to this new kind of version. And then we're going to pick a British winner that the, pu the public voted for and an Australian winner that the Australian public voted for. And then we had to, basically, I won the British vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I went to, got flown to Melbourne, and met all the cast of Neighbours, went on the sets. You know, that in itself was a, an amazing prize for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was I hadn't enough. I won. Yeah. I was like, that's enough. I, I couldn't believe I was on the set of Neighbours. And then, so we then went head to head, and they were going to pick one winner to be the actual voice. In the end, they picked both of us. They picked two, didn't they? And it was yeah. a draw! Yeah. And it became kind of a duet version. Stephanie Angelini, her name is. Um, look her up, because she's a wonderful singer. But the thing is about the Neighbours theme tune, they change it every two, three years. So oh, our, do they? Yeah. Oh, there's right. been loads of different versions. So our version ran for just under two years, I think. Right. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm sure people could find it on YouTube, couldn't they? You can find yeah. YouTube, but I'm yeah. going to be honest. I don't think it's the best ver I really don't. I'm right. not just saying that to be humble. Right. It wasn't the best version of the Neighbours theme tune. But, but again, but that's another thing I forget. Yeah, it's amazing. To think, it's if like, I knew that when I was back being a teenager watching yeah. Neighbours, to think that one day I'd record the theme tune. I did, I did use that, you know, I was like, that. my pal sings the, the theme tune <laughs> to um, Neighbours, you know. I saw Daniel a few years ago. Daniel, was it 2018 you did Boys in the Band or oh 19? Gosh. A couple of years ago. I don't even remember. A couple of years ago. So Boys in the Band was, um, if you haven't seen the film, watch the film. It's, mm. um, I found the film really hard to watch. I found it quite, uh, uh, I think I was very young and I watched it and thought, is this what being gay is? Yeah. And the first time I watched the film, I didn't really take to it that well. Then Daniel told me he was in it and I was like, whoa. And... I remember going to see that show and as I say, I've seen you in a number of things, but that for me was, that was a beautiful role for you, I think, because it, it just, just it was such, the character was so sweet. There was a lot of elements of you in him and it yes. just, it was, it was lovely to see you playing that kind of role, you know, because I saw you in Avenue Q, I saw yeah. you in Wolf, but so it was, it was, but to see that it was just, and I suddenly got the show. Yeah. I got it. It's, I, it's a difficult piece because mm -hmm. like you say, I watched the film before I was when well, I knew I was auditioning. It was seventies. Was, yeah. was it made in the seventies? Yes. Yeah. And it, I mean, just the film itself is slightly dated, I suppose. Yeah. But lot and lot, but lots of people think this now about the new. They've just filmed the mm -hmm. Broadway cast. Mm -hmm. and they've made a movie of that. But even still, now I know that it's just on Netflix. Well, like, last yeah. year. Yeah. 
a lot of my colleagues and peers still don't quite get it as a piece. Right. It is a tricky piece. Yeah, yeah. Because ultimately, it's set in, a, in an apartment, mm -hmm. and nothing really happens mm -hmm. apart from an act two when they start playing a, a game. Mm -hmm. It, but it's just an observational yeah, piece. Yeah, the telephone, the telephone, yeah, which yeah. ends. It's horrible. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. It's really horrible. But you've got to bear in mind that at the time, it was the first gay play. It was the first time they'd ever seen gay characters on stage. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, it was completely groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. And it was also set in a time when it was still illegal to be gay. And to have a group of gay men in a... In, this, Together, you, can't quite, yeah. you can't quite believe this. It was illegal for them to even be in, a, in an apartment together yeah, yeah. as openly gay men. Yeah. And so to kind of get that into your head when you're watching it, it then you can you can see the power of the mm -hmm. piece. When Daniel did it after seeing the show that night, they did a and a with the writer whose name I can't remember. Is that uh, Mark Crowley? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and he was there, and he because obviously it's his it's it's based on his his story, yeah. isn't it? You know, and his friends. It was heartbreaking to hear him speak. I, know, I, so I might get upset talking about him because sadly he died. I mm. think it was two years ago now. He was the most remarkable, lovely, supportive man. I mean, he was old. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he would probably laugh now and be saying yeah. that. But he came across and he was so supportive of all of us, wanted us to find our own versions of these characters, but they were all people he knew. Mm -hmm. Donald, the character I played, was actually his best friend in real yeah. life. Yeah, that's what and I remember him saying. He that. wrote us all individual emails constantly, but not just the most beautiful, supportive. supportive, telling us things. You, he said, you may not know this, but actually this line you're saying, this is because this happened in real life. And he told us real stories about them. But that allows you to connect more, doesn't oh. it, with the character? And then and he signed, more... he wrote us all a, he signed the, a copy of the script and wrote messages. And he said, your portrayal just brings back some memories mm. of my friend. And I mean, oh. honestly, the, I've, and I've saved them all. Yeah. And I've got all these beautiful messages from yeah. him. He took us all out for dinner. It, he was just the most remarkable, kind, generous man. Yeah, it's Lovely it's an man. amazing show, and if you get the, ch it was on on Broadway. Was it on Broadway first, and no, then you did it? Or was no, it the other way around? It was, around. It was only on Broadway around. about two years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's two right. Two or three years ago. That's right. I think out of everything I've seen you in, that was one of the 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 most powerful roles you've ever played. You it's know. so lovely to hear that. Thank you, oh. because. It was a it was difficult for me because I'd done a lot of musical theatre mm -hmm. and that was the first play. Yeah, I changed. I'd happened to change agents about six months before, and I one of my big things was like, look, I really want to do some straight acting, mm -hmm. as we call it, well, ironically, <laughs> gay play, but straight acting, some plays, some TV, and that was one of the first jobs I got being with them. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of pressure. I mean, yeah. I was the only, and I hate that there is this kind of distinction between musical theatre actors and actors there shouldn't be that it shouldn't exist sadly it is. does yeah and i was the only musical theatre actor in this cast yeah so they kind of i did feel pressure to yeah. to kind of prove my worth mm -hmm. and the success of it was incredible we had a transfer into the west end so suddenly i was in a west end play as well which mm -hmm. meant so much to me the role was just a gift he was a gorgeous character to play it he was, was kind of it was perfect for you he was kind of an observational character mm -hmm. it was a lot of the time he mm -hmm. was just in the background mm -hmm. And I think he Wonderful. his character brought this the element of kindness and heart into yes. it, you into know, because quite, a, cause quite often it could be quite cutting and quite, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, um, so it was, um, yeah, the role you played was, yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, it was lovely. I, was, I was very proud of you seeing oh, him in that. <laughs> um, now, let's go back to 2009. <laughs> you signed. <laughs> this is Daniel's CD. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know how it's signed. Did you? I don't know if I bought it like that. I mean, I can't imagine. Look at that awful. Or, I can't imagine <laughs> if you'd actually said, "Can you sign this for me?" I wouldn't have written something. I don't think if I don't think I would have asked you to <laughs> sign something for me because that, that's just a bit, you know, ask your pal to sign something. But anyway, this is so close. Daniel's CD. Um, Gosh, that was two thousand and nine. Yeah, how was it making a CD? I'd always, always wanted to do an album, and I was in Avenue Q at the time. It just felt like the right time to do it I will say my bank balance was healthy enough to help me do it because I pay I produced it myself right. I it was something I just wanted to do it was a kind of a passion project I suppose um, a very dear friend of mine Jennifer White was the MD of it um, she arranged the songs and but just spending time in a recording studio we were there about 
four or five days, five days in total mm -hmm. maybe. But it was hard because actually picking, how many songs did I pick? 12, well actually there's a reprise, so 11 songs. It's actually harder than you realise. How did you pick? How yeah. did you pick? My list was probably hundreds of songs, mm -hmm. I remember. And there'd be endless hours and lots of cups of tea around at Jen's house, kind of deciding what would what would make a good album. And none of them are, well, I didn't write any, they're all covers, mm -hmm. but I didn't want it to just be, and here's someone else singing Bring Him Home from Les Mis, here's someone else singing, you know, people, so many people have done that. I yeah. wanted them to be songs that maybe you haven't heard for years, yeah. song, songs that mean something yes, to me. Yes, yeah. And I hope that comes across. Every single song I picked for a particular reason, not just because I liked it, mm -hmm. but because it, it has played an important part in my life. Yeah. There's, you know, there's songs there from my childhood that my parents played me, for mm -hmm. example. And again, because of Any Dream Will Do, which was shown worldwide, yeah. the album, I mean, I posted these all out myself and had to write the address <laughs> labels and they <laughs> did. The, honestly, the amount of CDs I had to order and post, I was, I was totally blown, blown away, away and was posting them to Australia, to America, to China, Japan, like literally all over the world. It, it blew my mind. You must have posted one to me because I cannot. I remember buying it, but I cannot. Remember I, how maybe it's signed. I think I remember now. I, you maybe you bought did... this from. Do you remember Spot? Not Spot, like Dress Circle. Dress Circle. Because I did a whole load of just signing. Dress Circle was a shop that used to be in London. Which is so brilliant nice. shop. Oh. Yeah. The, the, the afternoons, Saturday afternoons, when you would just go into Dress Circle and spend hours yeah. just going through the CDs or the DVDs or the posters or whatever, the music. Um, sorry, a little flashback in time there. But yeah, maybe so that, that was it. I think that because, might have been it. Like you say, you wouldn't have asked me for my autograph. Daniel, can you get the autograph? <laughs> but also, he would have hit me. If you had done that, I would have gone, you know, written something horrible to you yeah. on the front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're singing, Daniel. I think. And I'm not just blowing smoke up, up, up your ass. I'm, this is this is genuine. Your I love your voice. Your voice is beautiful, and I I don't think it's heard enough. I'm a bit envious of just how good your voice is. Oh. You know, it's just it really go onto YouTube and find Daniel singing because he has just some of the songs. I'm like, oh, oh. I'm <laughs> like I'm fine, I'm fine. But your voice it really does that, and it you know so. You know, so I know I know sometimes we were talking earlier about how we feel about acting and you know how we can sometimes you go through a spell where it's you think, What am I doing? Where am I? Where am I at? And um but you really have a talent for that. So, you know, if you're ever gonna take any advice from anybody I would say don't don't ever let that go because you definitely have a an important thing there to, to use. So um so keep that please Thank keep you. that up. So it's so weird what we do because we're always so hard on ourselves. And honestly, you can ask, again, mentioning my, Chris, my boyfriend, but we've been together seven years, he knows me so well, but there's so many times when I go, oh, I can't sing anymore. I just, I can't do it. As in, I, I truly, truly believe I can't sing. Mm -hmm. I listen to people out there and I think, oh, you compare. You're always comparing. Oh. And that's not just in singing, it's in acting, in, in everything. And I'm sure mm. lots of people do it in any career. In any career, but... So having people like you telling me that, honestly, it means more than you'll you'll know. And uh, and I guess we all do need reminding of to not ever stop doing what we do. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 we do. I'm not we? saying... Sometimes, yes, I do have a lovely voice. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just, it's nice to, for people to... Even if it's someone I don't know, mm -hmm. even, even if it's someone I do know, like, yeah. just do so... You do have a lovely voice. It means yeah. a lot. So thank you. Well, uh, I would advise you to go check out some of Daniel's um, songs on YouTube and um, leave some comments in the comment section below when you have checked them out and I will pass them on to Daniel oh. and make sure that he sees them. Now, the last thing, I've got it here. Does that just say gay? It says gay. <laughs> it says gay. And I think it's very important because, because um, so often, Daniel, again, going back to being an actor, I remember what I was told was that a, a leading man in a musical could never be gay. This was a lot of years ago. Um, you were actually told that? Yeah, my agent told me that. My agent told me that. As in know, openly gay? Openly gay, yeah. Yeah, you don't, don't tell people because you will not get a lead in the West wow. End. You've always been very open about you, um, about being gay and about, you know, I remember reading something somewhere, you saying it must be horrible for people who have to lie and can't mm. can't be open and honest about it. So um, so do you think there's been any effect on your career because of how open you've been? No, it's, it's, it's my honest answer. Look, I, I think theatre is very different. It's a very different beast, especially musical theatre. 
to, I mean, let's talk about A-list Hollywood. I mean, there's still yeah. massively yes. in the closet actors there because mm -hmm. I, I think in their career, sadly, yes, I, although there's people like Luke Evans, lovely Luke Evans, oh. who are changing that in, yes. in a massive way. Yes. His career is extraordinary. Yeah. And, and he's played roles that... Straight, uh, you know, yeah. that gay actors wouldn't have, but you even know, ten he went because for those of you who don't know, yeah. Luke Evans was a musical theatre yeah. West End boy, yeah. and when he suddenly got plucked to to to, to go into Hollywood, even he thing. then had yeah. to. He was advised. I remember reading interview yeah. with him. He was advised yeah. to go take, back into to go closet, back in yeah. and say, "Oh, it was just a phase." But now he's he's, he's out. He's and, out, and, yeah. and he's championing that, and it should be that way. Yes. It shouldn't matter. Yes. Because what really frustrates me, I've kind of sidetracked here, is when straight actors are, oh, look, aren't they brave playing a gay character? Mm -hmm. Not brave, they're mm -hmm. acting. That's mm -hmm. what acting is. Mm -hmm. Why are they allowed to do that, but it can't be the other way around? Mm -hmm. So for me, I you know I feel very lucky because I never received any form of bullying whatsoever, let alone because of my sexuality. But just I've never experienced it. Mm -hmm. I have very I come from a very loving and supportive family background. My parents were very supportive when I came out to them. And my whole family were. My friends have been. So to me, it was just I I didn't even ever have to think about about not being openly gay. Not being you. <laughs> because I was openly gay at drama school and then I just have never not been. And I, like I said, you're, you're right, you found that quote. It must be, it must be very difficult for people yeah. who feel like they can't. Yeah. But it would be interesting to see if, say, I, I suddenly become a Luke Evans, would, would it affect my career? Who knows? I would like to think that people like Luke who are doing so much work and help in, in kind of making it not a thing mm -hmm. that it, you know it wouldn't affect it but who knows <laughs> who knows who knows or well, daniel where can people find you if they want to um get a cd um, signed, I, don't signed, I, signed, I don't think signed. i don't think i can even <laughs> have hard copies of this i've run out <laughs> yeah, it was so long ago so long ago Do people even buy cds anymore well, you can me. still get it on apple music and download it on i'm so not something technical. something all those downloadable iTunes and things those things um also so can well, on twitter you? and uh, any uh, instagram twitter they're all just at daniel boys and that's b-o-y-s okay there's no e in it people always add an e b-o-y-e-s it's just it's just boys this interview should have taken place two years ago when daniel was doing the boys in the band but i was sick and i had to cancel on him and um but it's nice because it's been nice to have you here. It's been and, um, so long overdue. Yeah, it's been an utter you know, delight. We have to we have to get on that and, yeah. and see each other more often because the time just flies, doesn't it? It just it really does. It just goes by. And you but, have every intention of meeting up. It's just life. It happens, doesn't it? We were saying the time that you saw me before that was in hospital. Daniel came and sat at my bedside <laughs> for is. a couple of hours and we talked about everything. But yeah, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, you for, for asking me. Thank you for being on Heart Talks. Um, if you have any questions for Daniel, please put them in the comment section below because I would love to see them and see what you want to know about this man. And, and yeah, look him up because there's some great stuff on YouTube and thank you I really appreciate you being, oh, on, you. being on and um, and yeah and we will see you in two weeks time please remember to like share comment and subscribe and yeah comments in the section below see you soon bye, bye.